CFD and mesh deformation. Great way to get an aneurysm. Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. Today on Practical CFD Modeling, we talk about mesh deformation. We use mesh deformation in scenarios where we need to actually physically move the body that we're modeling. These would be cases of things like internal flow where you're moving a piston inside a cylinder, or things like external flow where you have a ship moving in a seaway, like a seakeeping scenario. All of these are cases where the body itself, the physical object, is moving, which means that the mesh around the body also needs to move. It needs to change shape and morph. And as we're going to find out, that is advanced CFD and it introduces a whole lot of problems. So let's get into it. As I said, this introduces a lot of problems. Rule number one, mesh deformation makes your simulation incredibly unstable. It's going to greatly increase your residuals. Definitely use your monitors as your primary tool for judging simulation convergence. Also get a strong, stable simulation before before you turn on mesh de deformation. Start simple and then add in the complexity of mesh de deformation. The reason that mesh deformation adds so much instability is because we go from having velocity in our cells to a relative velocity. Everything is now relative to the velocity of the cell velocity itself. So we actually have a grid velocity added on top of our actual solved momentum equations as well. Everything becomes relative and that's a strong coupling that applies to every single cell in our domain. That's a lot of instability now. And it adds a whole new set of equations that we have to deal with. Now, not all types of mesh deformation are created equal. Changing the relative size of your cells isn't too bad. Changing the aspect ratio of your cells, that can start to become a problem. We're worried about how it changes our cell quality as the cells change shape. Skewing the cells is the largest concern. When they start to go from nice regular shaped rectangles and hexahedrals into skewed parallelograms, that's where we really start to worry about things. And the main cause of skew is when you get rotation of your bodies. That's the major thing you have to watch out for. Before you even set down to program your simulation, visualize what your mesh is going to look like after it's been deformed. That's your target for your meshing strategy. You have to start your mesh so that it will arrive at a decent state after being deformed. That's how you are going to actually do your meshing strategy. And that means also that you have to make your domains even larger than you normally would. You have to allow a large physical movement, but a minimum distortion to your individual cells. The way you do that is by creating large individual cells. Now we know that large cells are bad for actual resolution of our variables. So what you're going to actually do is put those large cells very, very far away from your actual bodies of interest. How do you do that? Large domains. That's the key to mesh deformation. One of the other tricks that you can do on some of these solvers is you can actually block the body in an inner domain. That inner domain is where you put all of your mesh refinements and you do all of your motions for that whole inner domain. Move the entire inner domain is one solid block and then do the morphing of your mesh in the outer domain. Strategies for how you would set up your mesh would actually depends on what type of motion you're going to be doing. So if you're talking just a pure linear motion, something like a piston rising up and down in a cylinder, in that case, you're going to be looking at an extruded mesh and you're going to want to actually bias your mesh so that you can actually allow that mesh to stretch and still result with a decent aspect ratio on your cells after it has stretched that's where you're looking for that biasing to kick in there. On the other hand, if you're looking at rotational motion, your biggest concern is cell skew. You can't really do much for extrusion meshes there. Your way around cell skew there is to try and maintain equal distances between boundaries in all scenarios. You do that by putting cylindrical boundaries for your inner and your outer domains, and then try to use radial meshing patterns. Structured meshes are a big help here for rotational motions and use as big of a cell size as you can get away with and still have accurate numerical solutions. That's the big key there for rotational motion. 
So those are my practical tips for mesh morphing. The big thing I have to say is make your domains large. Make them larger, make them larger. The key element here is you need a big physical space to allow movement so that you can actually have a small deformation to each individual cell. The key thing here too is to be aware of cell skew when you're doing rotation. That's the biggest thing that will destroy your mesh quality quickly. And you need to anticipate instability. This is really going to affect simulation stability. It's going to cause a lot of problems. So make sure you have a rock solid simulation before you turn on mesh morphing. And think about that mesh morphing. Plan how it's going to look before you set up your mesh. And the one other thing I can really just say is be patient. Plan lots of extra time into your project if you're doing mesh morphing. Mesh morphing really is a game of patience, strategy, planning. It's not going to be something you get right on the first time. You're not going to get it right on the second time. It's definitely something that requires forethought and a strategy. So plan it out and get ready for the long haul on that one. And uh, I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Good luck and thanks for watching. I am Nick the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.